the next two ones are going to be similar in the spirit to the center loss that we covered. And let's see why. But before I go into the details of the loss function, what are we trying to do? I kept repeating through the previous slides that some problems are closed faced recognition type of problems. Some of them are open set face recognition problems. But what do we mean? You have some training data. If these identities of the people that you're testing, the image, I'm not talking about the images, I'm talking about the identities, because this could be a different image of a person that you have a corresponding image in your training data. All you need is for identities to appear in your training data. If the identities appear in the training data, this is called the closed set face problem. Otherwise, if these identities don't appear in your training data, neither these images nor their identities, if they don't appear in your training data, that's going to be called open set face recognition problem. One of them is going to end up being a classification type of problem. And for that, being separable is enough because then you're going to be able to classify these identities. For the other one, being separable is not enough because one of your identities might have a representation closer to these red circles. And then being separable is not enough. You want to have a margin. And that's going to be called metric learning problem. And this is where you're designing your loss functions like trip that loss, center loss, etc. Then now let's rephrase these classes of problems. Face identification. A new image comes in. You know what your training data was. And then you're going to say, what is the identity of this person? Who is this person? And then you're just classifying them to have a particular identity. For face verification, two images are going to go in, perhaps of the same person or of different people. You know your training data. You used it to train your classifier. Take those two images, push them through your neural network, predict the IDs. If the IDs are the same, then these are the same people. If they classify to the same identity, they're the same people. Otherwise, they're different. This is closed set. This is a much easier problem. The other one is open set. All you have is some training data which you can use to train your algorithm. You know your test set, an image goes in. You're going to take that image, find its representation. You're going to take your testing gallery, compute the representation for each one of them. And then you're going to compare this representation to the representation of every single image in your test data. And you find the one that is the closest. And this is the way that you're going to identify one person as one of these images in your test data. Why? Because they have similar representations. They're going to cluster together in the low dimensional space. What is the other one? Two images go in, you compute their corresponding features, and then you compare their distance. And this is what we have been doing so far. And, uh, I noticed that you were not asking me what is the difference between face verification and identification. And I guess you knew at that time, if you're able to compare two images, you're going to be able to compare one image to a set of images and find the one that is the closest. And then you can identify that person. So solving face verification is enough or having an algorithm for it because then you can generalize it to face identification. So that's the big picture. And this is what we want to do in the next two slides. We want to do metric learning and this is open set face problem. Let's revisit the softmax loss. Maybe there is something useful coming out of it and maybe we can modify it. This is going to be the total loss of every single example. And for each example, you have the featureized version of your image. You have the corresponding class. You can multiply them together. This is dot product. And then you can push that through a softmax function. This is going to give you a probability. You take the negative of the log of that probability, which is the negative of the log of your likelihood. And yi is the correct or the ground truth label corresponding to this featureized image. So far, so good. Now let's do this. This dot product, you can write it in terms of the cosine function and the norms of these two vectors. So you're just using an identity here. And theta y i i is the angle between this featureized vector and the corresponding w y i. And you do the same thing for the other dot product as well. What is the idea here? When we were writing the center loss, we were assuming 
that there exists some vectors and then in the Euclidean distance, we wanted our data to cluster around those centers. Here, what we are saying is that we don't really need those centers. These WYIs are actually our centers in a different metric space if you go to the polar coordinates. So that's all we are saying here. So this is the angle between, uh, between two vectors. And WJs are the centers of those clusters that you want to write. You can normalize your weights. You can get rid of the bias to come up with your modified loss function. And then that's going to give you this loss function. Ws, the norm of Ws are one. You can get rid of them and these Bs are zero. So they're going to cancel out. And the loss function is going to be angular softmax loss, A softmax. What is the idea? You can take one of these angles and magnify it, multiply it by a number, by M. And as soon as you do that, you are emphasizing that the angle between these two should be bigger than the other ones. Don't worry about this uh, formula yet, especially this psi function. All we are doing here is singling out the example that we are interested in, the ground truth. The other ones are the ones that you want to decrease their probabilities. These are the other classes, which should be wrong according to your data. Their probability should go down. Let's single that out. So this is all of the j's who are not the correct class. And then you're modifying this cosine function for the correct class. How are you doing it? You are multiplying it by a number, by m. This is good. You can get rid of all of these negative to the power k, negative 2k, and the fact that these are within an interval. You don't need to worry about any of them. All you are doing is magnifying the angle here. You are emphasizing it more. And once you emphasize it more, your loss function is going to penalize it more. During training, you're going to focus on this angle and try to uh, push it towards the center. And the center is this angle here. But what are we doing this? Why are we writing this complex function here? Because cosine function is a periodic function. If you multiply it by a number, it's going to fall. There is a chance that it's going to fall in the next period. And then suddenly it's increasing. You want your learning algorithm to have a smoother uh, landscape to converge. So you're going to design your function in such a way that this is actually decreasing as a function of thetas. So I'm going to leave this as an exercise, write this function, and then try to plot it using your cosine. So you take an interval, plot your cosine function, take the next interval, plot it again, and see that this is in fact monotonically decreasing. But all you're doing is magnifying one of the angle between this vector and its center. And once you magnify it, you're penalizing it more. Don't worry about this yet, this table. Let's focus on this. You have a data set. It has around seven classes. If you use M to be one, you're going to be back with the modified loss function. And then you can see that there is some overlap between your classes. But as you increase M, these classes are going to become more discriminative. If you have only two classes, you can actually take a look at what is the decision boundary that's going to come out of a softmax loss? What is the decision boundary that's going to come out of a modified softmax loss or a softmax loss? And then you can see that uh, you're magnifying or multiplying the angle of the correct class by a number. And that's the reason these are clustering together, clustering around the center. And the center are these W vectors. And you can think of there is an arrow from the center of this sphere to any of these clusters. And these are your cluster centers. And then you can do your training on a bunch of training phase data. You have your testing phase data. You extract the features out of a pre-trained network. And then you can look at the cosine similarity to identify or verify phases. The training data is going to be Cassia web faces data set. And then you're going to do transfer on Label faces in the wild, YouTube faces, and mega face channel. Any questions about the sphere face?